Hello, I'm Denshi. Now, originally this video was just going to be a simple look at a tool called DaVinci Linux Converter, written by somebody who actually knows what they're doing. It's a it's a little electron wrapper program thing, written mostly in JavaScript as in the actual interface, made by Val++. So this Git, GitHub page will be linked in the description. And what it is, is essentially just a little interface, a visual interface to um, convert the files mostly in H.264 or whatever format for use in DaVinci Resolve. It doesn't convert them back, it doesn't do, so it's not as many features as my own scripts. But the thing is, is that I was just going to make a video about it, I was just going to open it up, you know, open it up here, open it up uh, if it wants to open, there it is, this, and then, you know, open a file, open, yeah, outro that mp4, which is just this mp4 file, and then convert it, and then just wait for that to be done. And then as you can see, it'd be done, and I would just pretty much finish the video like, you know, it's good, check it out. But the thing is, is that when I first saw this, I had the original reaction of, oh, that's bloat, that's pointless, that's stupid, that's dumb, why can't I just like run my scripts, or anybody else can just write their own scripts, put them in the bin folder and do that. And I kind of had to take a little bit of a, a double take with that, and I thought over what I thought, and I thought, man, that was a really dumb judgment to make. That was really dumb of me. Uh, you know, I just had that little, you know, double take when I first saw this posted on, I think it was somewhere on Reddit, I think r slash Linux, or maybe the Blackmagic uh, subreddit, somewhere, it was somewhere. But the thing is, is that I want to talk about, I want to use this as like a talking point for the importance of accessibility in GNU slash Linux. The, the entire ecosystem suffers a lot from like this little gap. I've talked about this before. I might open up Krita, maybe Kurta, Krita, to illustrate this. Okay, so I've drawn this little diagram to explain something that I want to talk about in this video. Um, imagine this is a graph. It's a very dumb graph and it looks, you know, poorly made, but just for a second. Imagine we've just plotted this line represents, so I'll just put this line, it's just GNU. So this line is GNU. Linux or something. So basically this line represents Linux on a it's just a distribution on this graph. And these two axes represent two things. This is difficulty, so not difficulty, sorry, lack of difficulty, ease of use, whatever, I just called it D. And A is ambition. So basically, as your ambition in the operating system increases, the ease of use first of all drops, then it goes back up. So in this field, we're looking at some basic things. I would use the text tool. Oh, I don't have a tablet, but basically, in over here, we're looking at things like web browsing. So I'll just draw a little web icon. I'm doing this with a mouse. It's awful. But like web browsing, we're talking like messaging, email, that basic computer stuff that anything with an internet connection and a basic processor that's relatively modern can do. That's easy to do on GNU slash Linux. You slap an operating system onto a USB, you boot it up, and you can do all that stuff. Uh, in the middle, we're looking at things like complex video editing. So I'll just draw like a little video thing, you know, that that thing, like little that that. So complex video editing, not complex, but like mediocre, like half video editing, basically. Things like I don't know, streaming, uh, not streaming video, but like streaming onto a service or something, and gaming. So I'll just draw a very crappy controller. There you go. Benji art. <laughs> it's awful. Well, yeah, gaming. And over here, we're looking at things like server, so server and stuff. We're looking at things like complex applications, AI, and complex programming. So I guess uh, CPP or something. Dot CPP. So we're looking at complex applications. So we go on a ambition. So ambition, we go from basic web browsing, email messaging, to uh, video making, you know, gaming and streaming, to servers, AI, and, well, quote-unquote AI, you know what I mean, like, uh, normal, like, uh, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, and dot CPP, so, like, uh, neural networks. Um, the reason this graph is important is because you can see there's a little bit of a hole here. I like to call this the hole. It's a little bit like the uncanny valley, except this is more of, like, a, the application valley, and the thing is, we've been slowly filling this hole despite how horrible and, you know, suggestive that sounds. So we've got in basic tools, like, I don't know, uh, I mean, Resolve is a big one, but uh, let's do Proton, for example. That filled the, that sort of filled a lot of the gaming problem. Proton, so that's filling that. We've had applications like, let's see, uh, Teams was ported over and other Microsoft, so, but that's not really good, but 
you know, people use Teams, so I guess you could say Teams is a good step towards that. Then again, that can just run in a web browser, so that's not like a big deal. And then things like Resolve as well. So basically, what I'm trying to say with this is that we're seeing, with, as Linux, so I'll just put, I'll just put like the DaVinci Resolve logo here. Very crappily drawn. God, oh, that's so awful. <gasps> Whatever, you, get, you know what it is. So what I'm trying to say with this is essentially, in GNU slash Linux, there's a little bit of an issue that we lack, except we lack the programs, we, I say we, but like, you know what I mean. GNU slash Linux as an operating system lacks the programs, it lacks the certain compatibilities, it lacks some things for this big part of the market, which is the middle of the market. So mo what, well not most users, but sort of the middle in terms of difficulty. So things like gaming, video editing, and streaming. And back to this, back to DaVinci Linux Converter, I, the reason, so wait, whoops, I closed the page, but the reason I like kind of scorned at it in the first place is because of something that I'd want to eliminate, and it's this, well, eliminate. It's a sort of elitist, but not really elitist, more of like a, an attitude to like shun easy to use interfaces and stuff. Now, yes, GNU slash Linux is different. A lot of people find it hard to use because of baby duck syndrome. I've talked about it a little bit in printing. They're imprinted on Windows or Mac, and they find the GNU Linux way, or just the Unix way, a little different. Whether it be on the server side, whether it be on the desktop side, whatever it is, they find it different. When they first, when I first tried GNU slash Linux in this very room, on a computer over there that's now running a, a server, a Minecraft server, so... Uh, shameless self-promotion, check that out. The IP is in the Discord server, so you'll also have to check that out. Shameless self-promotion once again. But back to main things. When I first tried out GNU slash Linux, I was shocked in terms of how different the dynamic was between the user and the computer. Things like being able to type in a command to install programs, I just didn't expect that to just kind of work. But there were various things that I found confusing, and the biggest thing was just program compatibility. I believe that program compatibility is not really an issue of the OS's dynamic, so as in like how the OS is made, besides, you know, the technical, in terms of how the OS interfaces with the user, I think it's more of an issue in terms of just the program not being available. And yes, I know, there's all these Libre, amazing pieces of Libre software, but the thing is, Normies are never going to discover Libre Software if they can't get onto the platform where most Libre Software is in the first place. So I, I, like, so I kind of had to, like, score in my own, like, not score my, like, uh, how do I say this, like, um, scald myself? I don't know, like, get a little bit angry with myself, a lot. Because I, for like a split second, a lot more than a split second, I sat here and said, oh, this oh, bloated UI, oh, this thing. I know this is a very banal example. It's a small example. It's just a little program for converting files. It's a little FFmpeg script. But the thing is, is that it does represent, so I'll just open up the program, I guess. Oh, no, I'll open up the Krita thing because I want to go back to this. It does represent something in this little hole. That little program, I'll just make it over here, fills that hole. It kind of fills it. A little bit more so we slowly get obviously this is an over exaggeration we're kind of we're much lower in this department because once GNU slash Linux has all this stuff nailed down finally it will be a desktop operating system that pretty much anyone who currently uses Windows can pick up and learn in like two weeks which is what I really want to see from GNU slash Linux so to everyone out there who sits there and looks at a program like this little just this tiny little program not to say that it's like bad, but it is a small little program in the compared to something like Proton or something. Like it, it is a small thing, but even this small thing, even sitting here and saying, ugh, it's so much better to just open up the terminal and typing in my uh, commands, v uncompress or something. Remember, new users find that hard and making a program like this, if you out there have this, the, the skills to do this, please at least consider it once. If, if you personally would find it useful, that's the OBS window, if you personally would find it useful or you think others would find it useful, make it. Because it helps fill this little gap in the sort of compatibility, accessibility market. So, yeah, we've got this stuff nailed down, we've got server, AI, and programming nailed down with GNU slash Linux, let's nail this down. And making programs like this and promoting them and talking about them gets people to make more and fills that little gap. But the thing is, is that 
it it's not people make the excuse that oh if we keep making these programs with these nice bloated interface they are bloated interfaces i will say like it's a javascript takes up quite a lot of memory for what it is and it, web interfaces in general using them on the desktop i don't recommend it but they do work quite well because they are completely cross compatible they don't, don't require any specific like javascript is pretty much installed on everything so yeah uh but People shun this kind of stuff because they're like, oh, it's bloated, or, oh, you'll never learn how to, like, make your own scripts. I believe that people, if they want to, if they have that, like, mindset, that I want to learn more mindset, they'll eventually get over to do everything they want to. If I, like, I, I have made those scripts that I made for DaVinci Resolve, I'll open them up in GitLab real quick. And uh, I made DaVinci Convert scripts, even as this little cool little logo that I made in like five seconds in GIMP. Um, but no, all these scripts do, there's just three. They just compress things, oh, with your GPU, with your CPU, or just uncompress things, right? And uh, the thing is, the original version of these scripts were literally just slightly modified versions of the original scripts. There wasn't much really changed from scripts I just found on the internet lying around. Speaking of this, I might actually want to change one parameter here, this thing over here. This resolution isn't needed, but whatever, that's okay. But anyway, See, I wouldn't know that. I wouldn't know that when I first made them. I basically copy-pasted and modified a couple of attributes and put scripts here from somebody else, which I can do legally because they're scripts. I modified them enough. And also, you know, they're scripts. But basically, that's my first exposure to that. It was through searching something up on DuckDuckGo. It's, it's basically that. You gotta have accessible systems. And having something like this with a graphical user interface Yes! Oh, it's bloated! Ah! I had not many options! I can't pipe it! I can't do this! I can't do that! But, remember, it's for new users, and new users will find this accessible. So yeah, fill the gap with Linux. Thanks for listening to my rant. I'll link this thing in the description. Goodbye.